We're in the garden this morning. Every time I'm in the garden, I can't help but think of this song and I hum it to myself while I'm strolling around either in my front or backyard. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Calling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own. Yes, they are, Vanessa. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the bird touched their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling and he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known and the joy as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I love that last verse. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. Now, today's a day I'd love to just stay in the garden with him, uh, but too much labor to do. <laughs> so. Um, psalm 102 is what we're looking at this morning, and it's a lengthy psalm, and I am going to take the time to read the whole psalm and just make some, some comments at the end of the psalm. But it's a psalm, we don't know who the writer was or really the occasion, and I think that's good because it, it, it applies in so many different broad ways just in, the, um, just in the strife of humanity, if you will. Um, evidently, this person is in de great distress and, and really anguish and affliction. Perhaps he's nearing his, the end of his life or he at least is so ill that he feels as though his life is about to end. And it's his thoughts at that time. And really it's not just his thoughts, but it's his communion with God at, at that time. And you know, every time, any time is a good time for communion with God, but it seems as though when life is distressed, when there's anguish, it God uses that, I think, uh, to draw us near to Him. It's funny that when everything is going good, 
uh, it's we're not as inclined to draw near to him. And I guess I could say one of the purposes of, of, of God in our sufferings is that he brings us, he draws us near to him because it's at that time that, or those times that we realize that only in God and, and really everything else in this world will seem to be passing away and it loses its value. And the thing that stands forever and will stand forever is the word of God and his name. And so it's in those times that we draw near to him. The psalmist cries out, cries out in verse one, hear my prayer, O God, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress, but God, incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is struck down like grass and has withered. I forget to eat my bread. Because of my loud groaning, my bones cling to my flesh. I am like a desert owl in the wilderness, like an owl in the waste places. I lie awake, and I'm like a lonely sparrow on the housetop. All the days my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink because of your indignation and anger. For you have taken me up and thrown me down. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like grass. What a descriptive, um, pointed place he, he communicates to us. He tells God where he's li what he's like. You can just tell in his writing here, there's just deep anguish. He feels lonely, he feels cast away. He feels as though he's in a dry place, like an owl, a desert owl, all alone out in the middle of the desert. Then he says in verse 12, here's that conjunction, but you, O Lord, are enthroned forever, and you are remembered throughout all generations. I think the psalmist is reflecting in, in the, 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 the minute time of life that life is just but a breath. But in the big picture, God is enthroned forever, forever and ever. And he is eternal. And he recognizes that though this life is fleeting away, God, you are enthroned forever. And we have to remember, we have to remind ourselves that though we are like grass here today and will wither tomorrow, that if we're in relationship to God through Christ, we have that hope that he is an eternal God and that our life does not end at this physical life. It's a transition to what we'll realize in that, that eternal state with him. Hallelujah, glory be to God. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come for your servants hold her stones dear and have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. Don't you love that? God does not despise your prayers. As a matter of fact, we glorify him in our day of trouble when we call on him, the Bible says. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord that he looked down from his holy height from heaven. The Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners to set free those who were doomed to die that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and in Jerusalem his praise when peoples gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. Aren't you glad that, that this has been recorded? Because at the time of its recording, we had not yet been created. But we can read back in the Word of God and bear witness and praise with those who have recorded the goodness and the majesty of God. Don't you love the Word of God? It so enriches the soul and so encourages us. Verse 23, he has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. Oh my God, I say, take me not away in the midst of my days. 
you whose years endure throughout all generations. Of old, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall dwell secure. Their offspring shall be established before you. Now here the psalmist recounts that, that God laid the foundations of the earth and the sky, all that's been created, when he created all that there is. But he realizes and recognizes that this is passing away. Even this earth and these heavens will pass away. The Bible tells us that after Jesus returns and he reigns for a thousand years in Jerusalem, after that time, God will destroy this heaven and this earth. And he will create a new heaven and a new earth where we will dwell with him for all of eternity. Now, we, we, we think that we'll dwell with him in heaven for all of eternity. But the Bible tells us that he will create a new heaven and a new earth. And in that, we will dwell with him forever and ever. Look up, be watchful, for your redemption draweth nigh, the Bible says. And so we look forward to that day. If thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Stretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, his love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. thanks to him throughout the day because his love does endure forever. Amen. There's nothing that we can ever do, nothing that has been created, uh, nothing that exists in this world, not even ourselves, can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Have a great day.